and we're walking in and I was just like, this is so cool. Got this beautiful girl, I'm in a Pink Floyd shirt and I'm walking in to interview a president. We go in, they sit down and I just start like pacing the room going, fucking hell, <laughs> what is going on? Welcome back to season five of Kryptonites, special edition London and Canary Wharf. We have some of the original gangsters of the crypto space and on top of that, a new format where you can earn crypto in every single show, plus earn swag and more. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and let's have some fun. <laughs> some of the biggest banks are money laundering for the Sinaloa cartel. And so much of what we're doing is trying to provide more transparency to the financial world. We're gonna see a surge in interest in smart contract platforms. It's gonna be an interesting market. NFTs coming from everyone. Everyone's dropping NFTs. So anyone now today still not sure about Bitcoin? You're fucking mad. <laughs>I mean, look, my life now, my work is dedicated to Bitcoin. That's all I do. I don't mind Monero. I could see scenarios where I would use Monero because I'm technically not that competent. So if me achieving privacy with Bitcoin, it's quite hard right now. It's quite hard, yeah. If I wanted to buy certain things, I would use Monero. And I don't dislike Ethereum the way some people do. You know, I, I see some benefits of these other blockchains. If you want to run a stable coin, I get it. Yeah, and stable coins can be useful. I can give you a couple of scenarios. Buying and selling Bitcoin on some exchanges, you just need a stable coin. Yeah. Yeah, so that makes life Great easier. Great liquidity, right? Yeah, and also certain people in certain countries, they don't just want Bitcoin, they want the dollar. Yeah. They don't want, so if you're in, I don't know, Argentina, you might want some Bitcoin, you also might want some of the dollar because the dollar's a bit more stability yeah. than Bitcoin. The dollar's a better currency than the, than the Argentinian. Is it, is it a peso in Argentina? Yeah, yeah a better yeah. currency than that. So I can see a purpose for it. So I, I struggle to say Ethereum is the worst thing ever. I hate it. Don't buy it. But I, I, what I say is, look, there are some people who can benefit from it right now. So I don't I don't deny them the use of that. My problem with Ethereum is is when it tries to compete with Bitcoin. Mm. I have a fundamental issue for that for a couple of reasons. If you want to have the best money in the world that's ever existed, if a country wants to make it legal tender and countries want to add it as a reserve asset, you know, people around the world want to hold it. It's very, very important that you trust that that money is going to be hard money. And so what do we mean by that? So the monetary policy isn't going to change. Isn't going to change. It's never changed. It's 21 million coins, there's a daily issuance with, with a halving every four years. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's like you can explain the monetary policy in two lines. With Ethereum, we know the monetary policy has changed a few times. Yeah. You know, and look, fine. But if you want the best money in the world, you do not want that change. Yeah. So that's the first point. Second, you want to be maximally decentralized. To achieve that, it's got to be simple. Um, you've got to be able to run a node. Anyone's got to be able to run a node. And I know there's some arguments about Ethereum nodes, but let's just be honest, full archival nodes, I'm not gonna do that, okay? So Ethereum isn't sound money compared to Bitcoin. It just, it just isn't. It isn't yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll happily have a debate with an Ethereum person about some of the things that Ethereum can do that Bitcoin can't, but I won't debate whether it's sound, sound money, money because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a 
it's a lie yeah. that it is. That's why I focus on Bitcoin and not Ethereum. I've got no reason to own Ethereum. Uh, yeah, and in some ways, the thing about Ethereum is the asset, it's not a store of value. Like Ethereum is a, is a thing that does stuff. Therefore, yeah. you should buy gas to do things. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about toxicity. I think toxicity is a bad word because I, I think it implies being, you can be a bit of a twat for the sake of it. Yeah. Let's just say. Without learning from a d debate, right? Sometimes you can yeah. learn from a debate. It's not all toxic. But my point really is that if you've got sound money, you've got the best asset in the world, companies have got their money in it, countries have got their money in it, and it's legal tender. What's really important is we don't fuck this up. Mm. And you you can fuck it up by making really bad decisions. So it has to be tough to change. Yeah, It's got to be really, Lots really hard right? yeah. to change. Yeah. You know, because if it was easy to change, what could go wrong? The monetary policy could get changed and you could have maybe a small amount of inflation. You no longer have the 21 million. Or the issuance will change and suddenly you, you don't trust the monetary policy. Or you could go for bigger blocks, faster transaction times, and suddenly it becomes less decentralized and you introduce new risks. Yeah. Therefore, anyone who's coming in who wields a lot of power that might have influence, you've got to net, let them know, we're all watching you, we're guarded about mm. you. I've got all my money in Bitcoin. I'm like, I support this shit. Do not fuck this up for me. Yeah. Like, I'm broke if Bitcoin dies. Do not fuck that up for me. Yeah, yeah, you're really all in. And, and I think a lot of people do that. And it kind of brings me to the one of the main and hottest topics at the moment where, you know, you're talking about, oh, I have all my wealth in Bitcoin, and some people are worried, are we in a bear market? And they're really frustrated. And then some of the Bitcoin lovers and believers are like, come on, man, the fundamentals haven't been stronger. Bitcoin, Jameson Lopp said this, Bitcoin is a get rich slow scheme. Yeah. <laughs> right? If you're buying Bitcoin because of the thesis, and you buy the thesis, right? Okay, rather than just being a short term trade. If you buy the thesis of Bitcoin, that sound money is important, we need this, right? If you buy that thesis, then you shouldn't be thinking of selling any Bitcoin. Yeah. Every Bitcoin you should be holding for at least four years, maybe longer. Therefore, if you know that, you should be celebrating dips because there's a chance to get cheap Bitcoin. Yeah. I fucking love this. <laughs> People are like, oh, give me 10K Bitcoin and I'll buy the shit out of it, yeah. you know? Because I'm not selling any for 10 years. I'm yeah. not over leveraged. I've got, a, I've got a good income and I don't need any of it for 10 years. So why wouldn't I want cheaper prices? Give me those cheaper prices. I think your first Bitcoin lesson takes four years. Once you've done four years, yeah, then you're okay, you're right? It's it's yeah. kind of like that marathon, right? Where you end the marathon and you can do another one, right? Yeah. But those who give up along the way, they like okay, because they break the rules. Yeah, they, they invest more the than they afford to lose. They leverage up. They trade shit coins. They panic. They FOMO, fear and greed. They do all those things. They don't just have a set of rules. By the way, I've done all that myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. 2017, yeah, I literally... Oh my God, got wrecked. Dude, all right, 2017, I traded 32 grand. I got up to about 1.2 million and pretty much lost a lot yeah. by, by a bunch of bad decisions. But whatever, that that was a... Getting wrecked is a good lesson. But it's but, a good lesson. It was my best lesson. But everybody else there it will tell you the same stuff. They'll go, dollar cost average. Don't trade because it's trade. hard. Yeah, if it's you do, hard. don't use leverage. But get a job, earn money, and dollar cost average. Dollar cost average. And just... And then everyone gets told that and then they go, yeah, but I'm going to trade this shit. And I'm going to trade Dogecoin on leverage and they get wrecked. And, you know, maybe you lose them or maybe they just, you know, they focus. But 2017, getting wrecked at early 18, great lesson. Yeah, great Changed lesson. everything for me. And now I just don't worry about it. I've done my four years. And Prize question of the day. So as we're talking about blockchains and longevity, which blockchain do you think has the most potential in the future? Put it in the comment section below and add two reasons why at least to win some ADA tokens and possibly some swag. So let's keep watching. My brother and I exactly the same, you know, reached to like, really, we couldn't believe all, all the wealth we had and got absolutely wrecked. Dude. Now I'm just saying, dude, this is the best lesson you can possibly get. Stay patient, control your emotions, you know, and just let it go, let it go, leave it, leave it there for years. But uh, so many, so many great tips, by the way. I really love those tips, Meter. And like the last question I'd love to ask you is okay. the El Salvador yeah, no. president. I mean, this could be the most positive fundamental news when a company, when a country, sorry, 
calls Bitcoin or, or classifies Bitcoin as legal tender. But yeah, tell us a little bit about that crazy trip. Dude. You sitting in a room with the president and you had a Metallica t-shirt, right? Well, that was the meeting, yeah. Oh, that was the meeting, uh, yeah. that was epic. I've Did told... you dress up for the actual? Uh... No, I wore no? a Pink Floyd t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll tell you what it was, is that uh, I, I was, I'd been traveling for six weeks. I was in New York and I was running out of clothes. Uh, I had no t-shirts left and I had no pants and I had one pair of socks. So I took an Uber. I was, I was interviewing Michael Malice that day. Before the interview, I took an Uber up to, I think it's Bloomingdale's, whatever. Because I, I pretty much always wear All Saints. All Saints, All Saints. All Saints. I, just, I love All Saints. It's just everything goes. I know, love that brand. Firstly, the t-shirts make you look thinner and I'm they a do. bit chubby. Me too. And uh, <laughs> they last and everything goes with everything. So I was like, where's the nearest All Saints? Bloomingdale's. <laughs> so I go up there because I've got three days left in New York. Uh, so I get three more t-shirts. I get three pairs of pants, three pairs of socks, right? <laughs> get back, do the interview. A couple of days left, going through the clothes. Get the call, come to El Salvador to interview the president. So I fly in and I've got no laundry done and I've got the meeting the next day. So I say, so you can get my laundry done. I'm texting the brother and I'm like, is there a dress code? Because people are like, oh, so disrespectful. It's like, is there a dress code? And he was like, no, bear in mind, these people don't realize I've been traveling for six weeks. I've got no clothes, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'm in El Zonte. It's not like there's a fucking bloom in Dale's there. I can just go and get a shirt, right? Yeah. So I'm like, is there a, uh, is there a dress code? His brother's like, no, where are we, wherever you want. The president, he's going to be smart because he's going to meet him, but usually he's like dressed down. I was like, all I had clean was a Metallica shirt and a Motley Crue shirt. So I was like, just as a joke, I was like, even a Metallica shirt, I'll show you the text, even a Metallica shirt. And he's like, sure, whatever. So anyway, my laundry comes and I'm like, <laughs> I think I need to go to Metallica shirt. Cause what a photo, right? <laughs> Cause I knew, I knew just off a, on, it's a bit of a troll. I knew uh, Twitter people would be like, what the fuck are you doing? So that that's the story behind that. That's so funny, it was uh, so epic. But the thing about the interview is like, uh, I'm gonna sound a bit like arrogant here, but I think I deserved the interview. Mm. I'm gonna tell you why. I've worked hard on my podcast. I've traveled the world doing this. I've tried to give back as much as I can. And I've been to El Salvador four times to oh, cover wow. the project, like three times already to cover the project. And I think I was the first to go and do it. So I was like, I, I've earned this. So I didn't feel lucky, oh. I earned it. But at the same time, I was so, like so overwhelmed because when I, when I, so, so I'd met this girl in Miami, uh, Jamie, at the conference. She was really cool. We got on really well. We hung out for three days. And I've been single for quite a long time. And I was like, she's cool. And uh, she, um, when I went to New York, she went back to Houston. And I got there and we're texting each other. I was like, do you want to come to New York? She was like, yeah, all right. And so she came to New York. And then, I was, then the El Salvador thing came out. I was like, do you want to come to El Salvador? <laughs> and she's like, what about my job? Sorry. I was like, do you want to? Do you just want to quit your job and come and do this with me? And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Why don't we just do this? We're having fun, let's roll the dice. And she was like, okay. So she came to El Salvador, totally looked after me. Actually, she's flying here tomorrow. <laughs> so she, yeah, she's literally, uh, she's getting a flight in about, I don't know what the time is now, in about three hours in Miami and she's flying here. Uh, so on the day, my back's fucked. I can't sit down on the chair literally cannot sit down i had to stand up oh, so i'm shit. pumping myself full of drugs and we get up there and she's amazing the reason i bring up she she kind of helped get me through that day i'm going to be honest she did everything for me she sorted the luggage out sorted the taxi out sorted all my questions out just did everything for me and so i could just focus on avoiding the pain and doing the interview and so we get to san salvador she gets she had to buy some clothes to go and she turns out and she comes out and she, honestly, she looks beautiful, like amazing. And there I am in a fucking ripped jeans and pink Floyd shirt. <laughs> I was like, but I kind of like, I was like, oh, we kind of look cool. So we go up to it uh, and we're walking in. And I was just like, this is so cool. Got this beautiful girl. I'm in a pink Floyd shirt and I'm walking in to interview a president. And I walk into this room and it's a big room and there's a full crew, like, film crew. The two chairs are there, the El Salvador flags are behind it, but there's all these other people. 20 people there we go in they sit down and i just start like pacing the room going fucking hell <laughs> what is going on like because you gotta think about it right five years ago my wife's left me for my best mate <laughs> like shit that sucks uh my son comes to live with me full time which sounds amazing but it's like there's a lot to think about, about that. Think about, yeah. 
my mum's died from cancer and my dad's on his own in Ireland. My company's collapsed. I had an advertising agency. I just did all right, like 40 staff, Covent Garden, 3 million turnover. Not bad. That's right, yeah. That's collapsed. So I've got no job. I can't get a job because I've got my kids with me. So I'm like, I don't even know how I'm gonna earn enough money. I'm a cocaine addict trying to come off that with anxiety, uh, severe panic attacks, and I'm having SVTs, which is like when you, this feels like a heart attack. I, I'm trying to think what else, like everything, everything is shit. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah and then like six months before, like, well, well, no, before that, I got married, had a company. So everything is shit. It's, everything's rubbish. Life couldn't be more rubbish. And then four years later, I'm interviewing a president, uh, traveling the world, and the podcast is doing amazing. And That's so fucking it crazy. Was, dude, That's I'm crazy. going on here, but like it's, it was so overwhelming to like, to just, just that moment, because if, everything could have gone a different way. Like, I could have died from drugs. I could have just not started a podcast and not had a job. I could have, I could have stayed a coke, coke ad, or I could have been alcohol. Like it could have gone any way, but this is the way it went, and here I am. So I was like wandering around this room, going, "God, this is so fucking overwhelming." Like I can't. <laughs> like I'm not one of those people who's grown into yeah. the role and learned how to like control my language or to be a, you know, you know how like some people become yeah, footballers yeah. or musicians. They become famous, right? And they learn how to become into that role. I haven't. I'm just yeah. a dickhead from Bedford, right? <laughs> so I'm just in this situation. I'm just so overwhelmed by it all. I still am, man. I, you know, it's insane. I mean, you know, you're mentioning earlier in the interview where it was an alternative past, but this yeah. is almost like the extreme U-turn, right? It's a crazy Dude. turnaround of events. It's just mad. What's more important is Bitcoin is mainstream now. Yeah. People are like, how do we get to mass adoption? I've been saying this for a while. We are mass awareness. We don't know all these people sat over here, right? What was it like? eight people there. If we went over to them and said, have you heard of Bitcoin? Do you reckon any of them would go, no, what's that? I'll say yes. Yeah, so in the UK, in America, most of Europe, large parts of Asia, Australia. Even Iran. Yeah, I can't remember last time somebody says, what do you do? I say a Bitcoin podcast, it goes, what's Bitcoin? Like everyone has fucking heard of it, yeah, right? Yeah, everyone's heard of it. We have a country, we have companies, we have exchanges, we have banks. It is here, it's mainstream. Yeah. And it feels like a lot of that's happened in the last year or so, right? So. I don't want to focus one thing say, is this the most bullish thing? Everything is bullish. Yeah, everything, yeah. Like anyone, <laughs> like, for anyone now to deny Bitcoin and say, mm, I'm still not sure, I was like, are you fucking mad? Yeah. You need to look at this. If, you, if you're denying Bitcoin or you're not holding any Bitcoin, you're fucking mad because it's the most important asset in the world. It's spreading fast and there's only 21 million. Like yeah. Preston Pish says, it's a game of musical chairs and when it ends, yeah. you want to have enough as you can. And there's people out there like, Meh, I like just, that. I'm still not sure about Bitcoin. It's like, chairs. you're fucking mad. That's really well put, a yeah. game of musical chairs. That's I why I don't like bother that. with shit coins. It's like, what's the point? Bitcoin is the hardest, most pristine asset in the world. Just give me as much of it as you can. That's like, it's the best investment, the hardest money, the most important technology for the world all in one. It sounds hyperbolic. Yeah, no, no, but it, yeah, is. it is. Yeah, it is. It really is. Well, you know, this has been fascinating, man. Like, I loved it, Peter, man. going from, you know, your intimate life to some of the crazy parts of the dark web and understanding Bitcoin, the light bulbs, you know, going through why Bitcoin, what is the definition to your, all the way to your interview with the El Salvadorian president. It's been a crazy, wild and journey for you. Thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, Appreciate amazing. it, brother. And, and really, like, for those watching out there, hopefully you already know Peter McCormack, but what Bitcoin did is probably one of the best podcasts in the game to learn about one of Bitcoin. The big, one of the, fuck, oh, I come, yeah, the, the, I come okay, all the way to the? London for you, <laughs> and you like put me, along right. with who, what, with Pomp? Yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not friends with Pomp, hey, I don't listen, know him. Okay. I, I like Pomp. Let's say the best. I like Pomp. It's good to have uh, someone snapping on your heels. Forces me to up my game. <laughs> Let's redo that. Let's reshoot. No. It is the best. No way. Bitcoin Leave it. In. <laughs> Leave it in as he said it. Fuck you. I want that in there. I want them to know. Like I come all the way to London. Never gonna come I back. For I me stay again. downstairs for half an hour, and you call me one. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Definitely check it out. We'll put links below for you guys to see that. Peter, man, you're a ledge, man. Cheers, Thank bro. you so much for this. everything. It was great, great fun. And guys, don't forget to tune in every single week, Wednesday, premiere at a PC near you, 8 o'clock PST. Thank you so much. See you next week, guys.